Episode 2 of the Leonardo DiCaprio Challenge starts off like this. Following our one all draw that happened last episode, go and watch if you haven't so you know the rules of the save. OH MY GOD! The Young Boys FD were looking to have a fast start to the season, but that wasn't what the FM Gods had in plan for us, as a huge 4-1 loss to VegGuard was not the start that we were looking for. Following that on, we had Naseby BK, where we unfortunately went down 1-0, but ended in a one all draw, following a 75th minute equaliser from Yannick LeBird. We were three games in, and still didn't have a win on the board. The young boys were quickly falling down the table. And the next game was against BK Friend, who were predicted to finish first in the league. This was a worrying sight, and going down 1-0 in the first 25 minutes <gasps> had me thinking that this was going to be a chalked up loss. However, Jonas Yederholm literally exists. And thankfully for us, he showed up, scoring two goals to give the boys their first win of the season. The game after that, we came away with another one all draw against Lysange, which really should have been a win if Ball could score a pen. What are you aiming at? Yeah. But we move on. We were a respectable sixth place in the league, with six points in our first five games of the season. It was looking like we were going to have a great season and easily make the promotion phase. However, this wasn't going to be the case for long. Hey, 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 now, hey, now. Slow down. Scoring only one goal in our next three games and falling to second last in the league. The dynamics at the club were horrendous and something had to change. And change it did, moving from the traditional 4-3-3 to a more conventional 5-2-3 in the hopes of defending better and counter-attacking when we get the ball. Then we signed midfielder Jonathan Canto, who would be a great player for us, along with loaning in a new left-back, Magnus Raven. The best 11 had gotten remarkably stronger. The first game with the new tactic was a sign that we were definitely onto the right track, with a huge 3-1 win over Holbeck with goals from LeBird, Ball, and also Grant. But somehow this wasn't enough. We were hauled in front of the board and told to do better or we were going to be sacked. And Stay or go. He has to go, blood. He has to go, blood. The next two games were absolutely crucial. Fortunately, we had more of the same brilliance as the last game with the new tactic, starting off with an emphatic 1-0 win over title hopefuls Van Lowe's IF, and a fantastic 3-2 come from behind win over Ishodge with goals from Nemo Thompson and Jonas Yetterholm again, saving the day. But two wins in a row was all we were going to get, as we suffered a 1-0 loss in the next game, which was then followed by a 2-2 draw, in which they scored early. But we equalised it right before half-time, then took the lead right after half-time, only for them to equalise it again in the 70s. After that, it was a horrible 3-1 defeat to Naseby, where our only goal was due to an error from their centre-back passing it back to their keeper. Disgusting. So the new tactic worked originally, but we had fallen well short of being successful in the last three games, and there was only three games to go before the agonizingly long three month winter break. This is taking too long! The first of these three games before the winter break was against BK Fram, in which Nemo Thompson scored twice and Yannick Lilbird once, to give us a 3 0 lead inside the first 40 minutes. BK Fram did fight back, however, scoring two goals later in the game. But really, it didn't matter, as we came away with a 3-2 win, and we had started November off in the right way. The media obviously seemed to think otherwise, as after that game, I received this email. Now I'm panicking. Don't panic. No, I am, because I'm going to lose my job. Saying it was do or die for the second time this season. And I thought my managing career was all over, as we were coming up against Lysange, who we only managed to just get a draw from earlier this season. Unfortunately, the game started just as I was expecting, with them scoring a very nice through ball 13 minutes in, before making it a second in the 53rd minute. They then followed that up by scoring again, making it 3-0 10 minutes later. At this point, I was ready to be sacked after the game. I had tried a new formation, I'd tried bringing in new players, but it just really wasn't meant to be. The board was going to get what they wanted, and I was going to be out of a job the first thing tomorrow morning, having not even made it to the winter break. The boys did give me a nice send off as the game trickled away though, as we were able to score a Thank consolation you. goal with Nemo Thompson in the 73rd minute. Then, another highlight popped huh? up and Nemo Thompson scored again. I thought, could we actually come back here and save my job? I changed the tactic to attacking and encouraged the boys. Then, in the 95th minute, another highlight happened. Was it going to be a miracle, or was it going to be a mischance to absolutely smack me across the face with? It started with winning the ball back in the midfield, and then a wonderful pass from Kanto to Zah, who was on. If he scored this, I would keep my job. I can continue the series. We can do Leonardo DiCaprio proud with this young team. It was all up to Zah. 
Who scored? Our job was saved. We've done the impossible. We've come back from 3-0 down in the last 15 minutes to save my job and my career at Young Boys FD. What a ridiculous game. This was exactly what the club needed. Something to celebrate and it absolutely lifted the club up as we then went on to win the final game before the winner break, three goals to two, with goals from Peterson, Nemo Thompson and Laberta of course. Now as we are halfway, just thought I'd quickly mention that if you want to watch the games as they happen, I am streaming live on Twitch most days, so I'll put a link for that in the description if you want to check that out. Now coming back from the winter break, unfortunately the left back that we brought in on loan, Magnus Raven, had shown way too much promise for us and was recalled. Along with the saviour from the first episode, Borset Anderson. So we were without a quality left and right wing back going into the second half of the season, which was extremely worrying. We did however manage to grab Victor Engard on loan, but he was nowhere near as good as the departing Magnus Raven. After the winter break, there was only five games to go in the preliminary stage, and we were agonisingly close to making the promotion group in eighth place. The first game after the winter break was a 2-0 defeat to VSK Aarhus, but we bounced back with a 3-1 win in the very next game. There was three games to go, and we were so close to making it, equal on points with 5th and 6th, and with the next three games coming against Holbeck, Vanlos and Ishoj, two wins out of the three would surely mean that we were able to make it into the next stage with the table being so close. This is unfortunately where our luck does run out as we lose the first game 2-1 to to Holbeck and our star keeper Agar gets injured leaving us to play with a subpar keeper for the remaining of the games in the first stage. The second game against Venlos was worse as we went down 5-1 before calling back to a 5-3 defeat late in the game. There was still a chance for us to qualify however in the very last game but we were going to need something special and with Holsterbro needing to lose by a lot, so I really wasn't getting my hopes up too much. We did win the last game of the preliminary stage, but it really wasn't Kobe. enough to qualify. But the good thing to come out of this disappointment was our new signing, Isaac Tannender, who would be great for us out on the left wing for the remainder of the season and coming into next year. The relegation stage was a mixed bag, as we won 5, drew 2 and lost 3 leaving us to finish third and narrowly avoiding relegation by a sweet three or so games. Some highlights of the relegation stage were a 5-1 thrashing of BK Fram and going unbeaten in the last five games, which is wow. hopefully a sign of what's to come for the next season. The club did recognise how hard it was to manage this team with some of the stupid wages that players were earning before I joined the club and for avoiding relegation. And thus, I was awarded with a new contract after being told the whole season I was going to be fired. Nice. Also, here is the summary that FM gives you. Go and pause it if you want to know exactly how everyone did and what players got what awards. But here is this season summary if, you wanna, if you're interested in that. To summarise this season for the young boys, I would say it was a year full of inconsistencies. As we would go on a winning streak, then go on a losing streak. Next year, with full control of players' contracts and hopefully having Aga our keeper for the whole season, it gives me confidence that we can weave some magic and get these young boys put into the promotion group and to be promoted. So make sure you watch the next episode to see how we actually go. Also, I should mention that we did have a really good youth intake with a few solid players who could crack into the first team in the coming years. If you've made it this far in the video, I love you so very much and it would be awesome if you would hit the like and subscribe button for me and let me know down in the comments what you thought of the season. Also, if you want to watch the games as they happen, like I mentioned before, I have left a link to my Twitch in the in the uh, description below where I'll be live streaming the games if you, if you prefer watching it that way. Lastly, if you haven't watched the first episode of the season, I highly recommend that you do so, so you know the rules to the series. Thank you so much for watching guys, I will see you in the next episode with a recap of the second season.